Let me treat you to some pre-COVID footage, to a time we didn't have to wear these. That's me in Feb of 2019. Handsome, I know. But let's not focus on that. Allow me to pull your attention towards this. That's a gable. And if you've ever been to Cape Town, they're not just on buildings, but everywhere. Now, let's admit it. The style may evoke reminders of our country's troubled past. But what if I told you the whitewashed walls weren't so white? And the story? is a bit more proudly South African. It's time we go outside. In Cape Town, there are layers upon layers of history on every street. It's an eclectic mix of old and new. From Eastern, Victorian, neoclassical, art deco and Georgian influence, to Cape Malay houses in Bukop. Then there is Cape Dutch, with its whitewashed walls, shutter windows, thatch roofs and gables, and also Cape Dutch revival architecture, which appeared during a time when there was this great awareness of the importance of what makes up South Africa's identity. It evolved over a period of time between the 17th and the early 19th century. The first one of its kind was the Cape of Good Hope Castle. It was built as a five rampart stone castle between 1666 and 1679. And with the ocean kilometers away now, it is hard to believe that the waves were once crashing on the northernmost bastions on stormy days. It's also the reason why this is called Beach Road, Woodstock, and the place where you'll find the name behind the new Winchester mansions, and why it looks like this at the moment. But most importantly, the most eloquent definition of our Cape Gable. Gable is an architectural device to keep the rain from falling on your head over the front door. <laughs> and that's how it was introduced, if you think about it, in a traditional Cape homestead. The central gable was right above the front door and it made the door much more important by being very ornate and, and, and uh, decorative. And it was always beautifully proportioned as well. It's often not realised how classical the rules of making a Greek temple found their way all the way down to the Cape and into those front gables. Yeah, it, it, it represents importance, it represents wealth, the ability to do that, and it's voluptuous. The, the tradition is above and beyond the simply functional to the celebratory, and, and it makes buildings stand up despite their function, despite their scale. But the Cape one is just unique in that its, its simplicity and richness somehow come together through that application of those skills of, of ordinary people who made them. As I have acknowledged, the style may evoke reminders of our country's troubled past. Nonetheless, it should not be dismissed. One of South Africa's best preserved and most publicly accessible Cape Dutch architecture is Groot Constantia. This building received a lot of attention, even more so after a fire destroyed the manor house and the importance of preserving it took centre stage. You see, what makes Cape Dutch architecture so interesting is that while it was borrowed from Europe, it is as South African as can be. And if you are looking for a symbol, turn your gaze towards the sky, the gable. The Cape Dutch gable was a unifying element in architecture. It represented not only the Cape, but South Africa as a whole. You see, when Jan came here, the Dutch brought with them a language of architecture which translated differently. The plan here was vernacular architecture. 
to build in such a way that it's adapted to the local climate, the availability of material and the hands who put it together. But here's the clincher. When the slaves came from the east, they also brought a wealth of knowledge with them. No specific architect can be tied to the gable, but the Malays are the ones who built it. Their heritage is cemented and engraved in the structures. It is thanks to them and their craftsmanship that the gable became and remains such an iconic symbol. Dr. Andre, how's it going? Very well, thank you. There are a couple of things. One is, is to understand the gable isn't only in Holland. It was also in Belgium, it was in Germany. Um, normally constructed of base brick. They're not plastered. They don't plaster them. So the image that, that the, of the gable that we have is one which is already, it's, it's, been, it's been adapted and changed. So it's, it, yes, the outline, the form, and some of the kind of stylistic things, yes, it does, it has a kind of origin, particularly in the Netherlands. But, but the way that it was interpreted, it certainly is much more in common with the kind of architecture that you'd find Southern Europe, and then as a result of Southern Europe in parts of India, um, in Malaysia. So, which then starts saying, hang on, this isn't a pure Dutch kind of gable. Unlike, say, when you look at uh, lots of other buildings, I mean, obviously the Cape Revival is different, where one would say this is Herbert Baker, this is John Perry, is that the gable itself, we don't know. There were no architects. No architect is associated with it. Who made it? We don't know the names of the, of the builders even. And a lot of those, the way that the plaster work was done, the way that the symbols and, and patterns were being formed, they speak much more about um, people of so-called Malay origin. Those are the people who actually made the gable. Stories that can't just be about the good times. They can't just be about the bad times. They, they're all of it's an interweaving of all of those. When you put all of it together, does it mean that the gable can perhaps be seen as the first real icon of South Africa? This is a story, it, it's not a thing. It's not a snapshot that you want to take back to its absolute original condition to make it valuable and appreciate it. So a big part of its worth to society and, and to those who own it and those who visit it are those quirky layers and the stories associated with them. The Cape Dutch facades and the gables in particular, the, the detailing was actually really inspired by the city itself and all the influences that Cape Town had through its history. So in particular, the Eastern influences and the detailing and the choices that were made kind of established it as uniquely Cape Dutch. And uh, funny enough, although it was influenced from all these European cultures and the history, later on, you know, the Cape Dutch style was then imitated in Europe and kind of proclaimed the Cape Dutch style rather as you know its own unique uh, own unique style. One of the main reasons that I choose to illustrate these historical heritage buildings here in Cape Town is the fact that you know I try to put the, the focus and the highlight on the preservation of these magnificent buildings. Um, you know history is not always pretty but it's important that we remember it. This episode was proudly made possible by the Winchester Mansions Hotel, the grand old dame of the Atlantic seaboard. Having been here for decades, they love the journey that got us here. And soon, it will open its doors yet again to welcome you back.